If you had an emergency and needed to pay for an unexpected bill, could you do it? Almost half of Singaporeans say they don't have enough emergency funds to cover them for six months in a crisis. And about 45% say they don't have enough funds for their family needs for the next year. I think emergency fund is extremely important. I mean, um, if you use the old saying, you know, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. If you do not plan for emergencies, and when life throws out certain lemons for you, some of these things will come back to bite you and hurt you financially. Emergency fund is crucial uh, because life is unpredictable. I mean, it also provides a financial uh, safety net, for example, unexpected expenses such as medical emergency or you just simply want to sack your boss. Uh, so which is why it's a very important financial safety net. The first thing to consider is how much money you should have in your emergency fund. Well, a general rule of thumb is three to six months of your monthly living expenses plus loan commitment. But the actual amount really varies with individual circumstances. I mean, you have to look at your own needs, uh, your job stability. For example, for self-employed who has uh, inconsistent income flow, I would recommend them to have six to 12 months of emergency funds. For an individual, I think you need to consider your consumption patterns, which will effectively mean how much you really need. The size of the emergency fund which is intended to cover, is it for oneself, is it for your family, or is it for a bigger group? And ultimately, what is it that you are really um, requiring this emergency fund for, dependent on your passive income, or is it just purely to replace your active income? The next step is to decide where you want to stash your emergency fund. So, emergency fund should not be invested with your regular savings, whether it's for home purchase or retirement planning, because it should provide liquidity and it should be safe. So, you can actually put this into high yielding account. For example, there are many of the digital banks that offer you better high yield or investment platform that provides uh, money market solutions which can provide a yield of more than 3% or you can even consider Singapore government saving bonds where actually it gives you the flexibility to withdraw anytime you need the money. Another piece of advice is to not put that money into highly volatile investments. One should never risk it. If you put your emergency fund into something that's highly volatile, highly dependent on market conditions, when the time when you truly need it, it that may not be the best time for you to gain access to those funds. Here's how building an emergency fund would look like for people in different stages of life. The first example is a fresh graduate on a full-time salary of around 3,000 Singapore dollars. Assuming he doesn't have other family um, burdens that he may need to look into, he needs to start sitting down and try to prioritise what are some of his key expenses and what are some of the uh, nice to have. And through this process of identification, you're able to assign the right amount of money to set aside as emergency funds should the need comes along the way. For families with children, the requirements for an emergency fund would increase. Not only does, does it need to cater for um, the two parents and also for the children. But importantly, we are talking about two uh, dual incomes. One needs to first plan a possibility of one individual losing an income. What does that mean for a single income family now? Secondly, what if in the uh, unforeseen circumstances that both loses their income? That requirement would have doubled. And hence, it's incredibly important for both husband and wife to start planning for various scenarios in this instance. Our last example is a self-employed worker. Let's call him an ordinary Joe. His income fluctuates from $2,000 per month to $5,000. How should he set up his emergency fund? Joe's um, need for emergency fund is actually the most critical amongst many scenarios. Why? Because the possibility of him having zero or a lot can be relatively high. As such, Joe should really, really think about building the emergency fund as early as possible, catering to the most critical part of his consumption needs, 
before he moves on to enjoying himself or buying other expenses which may not be uh, of urgent needs. Regardless of where you are in life, experts agree that an emergency fund is an essential financial foundation that will help give you peace of mind in the future. And after you get started on building your emergency fund, it's also important to keep it up to date as your life priorities evolve. When people start thinking about their emergency fund seriously when they first start working, right, and they use their first paycheck as a gauge, but what people forget to do is when their liabilities increase or when their salaries increase and their spending increase, they forget to look back and figure out, hey, does that number make sense for me? Right? So it's a constant re-evaluation and I think people need to regularly look at that number again to see if it really meets their needs.